G'day, he's all going. Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. He's all doing out there. Today I thought we'll get a bit of art action going on here on the canvas. And I'm going to show you a display picture I've got. Because I want to show you some things you can do with a reference picture that you're going to use. So, I want to do a barn. I found this picture on Pixabay. It's a free website. And um, it's got a lot of elements that I like to teach in my tutorials. Like the way they've got the dark colour in the atmosphere of the sky, the sky, um, some foliage, um, a, fro a, a foreground field there, and just some distant stuff. Now, when you're taking on a reference picture for you beginners, look at it for quite a while. There's no rush to do anything. Work out what's in front, what's behind. So you don't want to do all this far ground mountain all the way along knowing you're going to cover it up. And just work out the colours you're going to use as well. So we'll get the size of the canvas up here in centimetres and inches. Well, there's the centimetres and inches as well, because some people like to know what they are in inches. And we'll get the colours coming up the screen there for you as well. Now be sure to subscribe in the bottom right hand corner there if you're new to my channel and press the bell. That way you'll get notified when I'm uploading videos. And put this video on your smart TV. Get some people around and watch it and learn what's going to happen. Know what you can and can't do. Find out what mistakes I'm going to make so you won't make the same ones. And then you can paint along, all right? I'm going to do the sky first. I'm not going to copy the sky exact. I'm going to use, I love the flavour of that sky, the purple down the bottom and the, the light blue with some fluffy clouds whispering all over the place. So I'm going to use the sky but do it my way. So to achieve my sky, I've got my soft flowing craft student quality paint here with some retarder. That's going to um, prime up the canvas panel virtually and be staying wet so I can blend in my sky. And I'm using French Ultramarine and for the shadow colors it's going to be Quinacridone Magenta and some Midtone Gray. So looking at that picture, the sky is virtually halfway. I want to get this up for the sky. Now my sky is the only part of this painting I'm going to blend. So that's the only part I'm going to use the retarded undercoating flowing white on, okay? This comes there somewhere, get these lumps out of there. And then we're going to put in the, the sky colour. Now we want our sky to be light blue, don't be too dark. So I've got that brush, I'm just going to pick up some of the French Ultramarine on both sides. The white paint on the board and in my brush has already lightened it. And get it right across there. Just scratch it in the edges, get it all the way on, okay? And we've got a beautiful, decent, light colored blue sky. We don't want it too loud and dark. I've done that when I was a beginner. And I wouldn't want you to do the same thing. So there's our sky, it's only coming halfway down the canvas. Now we're ready to put the purple bottom atmosphere in there. There's a quinacridone magenta and I've mixed it up in that pile of grey that I had. Sorry, my camera wasn't on when I did that. So I've got my fan brush and I've mixed up the quinacridone in the mid-tone grey to get this at the bottom of the sky. Okay, we've got this purple haze in the bottom of the horizon line. Now we want to get these clouds out. Now see how they are in this photo as well? If anything, you can pan them out from the centre, just so as they don't look flat on your painting. So I'm going to pick up, I like using my fan brush for clouds, as you all know, and we're going to pick up the titanium white and get some clouds whispering across our sky. Now this paint is wet and retarded, which is good. I want to get something from there and scoot out overhead, just like that. Get a bit more white on there. All right, we've got the top of our cloud. And what I'd like to do is blend from halfway down. I'm just dancing on, stabbing on, twisting that edge out to buggery there so it doesn't look like a stupid ending. And blend that down, but leave some of the bottom on there. Don't blend it too far into nothing. Okay, 
So that's the center of my painting there, even though it might not be the center of this actual canvas board. And then we just tickle the tops of that. So I'm doing my style of cloud using from that reference picture. I'm not gonna try and make them the same as what's on that reference. And then we'll get some more scattered about as well. So over here coming off the page and something over here as well. Get that white. Clean your brush if it's building up too much mess. And we'll blend those as well. Because so we're gonna have, we don't wanna do our sky too low. Blend that, wipe your brush, soften this and blend it into the sky as well. All right, look at that, easy. We'll just quickly get something over here. Dance it on, virtually coming from the middle and maybe some little pokery bits there, just like that. Grab your blending brush and blend them all down into your wet retarded sky there, okay? Practice your clouds and blending. Some people want to look at a painting tutorial and just step right into it. You've got to practice everything before you get too involved. Work out what strokes work for you. And then when you incorporate everything into a painting, you know things are going to work. All right, we've got our clouds, simple clouds. Let's do some shadow into them now. So we're picking up that tint that we made and in some of this we want to put some shadow just depth okay so we've got our tinted color here I'm mixing more gray with it now just so it's not going to clash with the purple haze at the bottom of our sky and we can bum out the bottom of the clouds give them a bum coming overhead, blend that in so it's not going to clash with the bottom haze there. And this is the second part of the cloud. Where else do we want? So not so much in this little white stuff, that's, that's about as much as we need in there. And probably just a bit scooting up in here just to give that some darkness and maybe just a little bit in there to give that some volume and strength. So I'm just gonna dance that softly, twist it into there so you got gray shadow within that. All right, all over the place. And get that in there as well. So I've just picked up some pure white on that smaller fan brush and the clouds work out where you want some bold round shapeness to them and click on the yumminess gives it more of a 3d look if anything it's not so much a flat cloud okay you can see what it's done there and some on here a bit up there and just tickle them till the cows come home and you've got happy clouds. Get up there. This yumminess, don't sink it right away. Leave it hovering, leave it sitting there so you know what's happening. Pick up some more and you watch what it does. It's just putting that vibrant lust into your clouds. But don't sink it down, leave it there, you just, I mean, don't wash it in, you're just sinking it down, sorry. There we go. That's okay. So I blow dried this, we've got our sky on, now we'll put our next feature into this painting. So going back to the reference picture, I'm going to sketch in the, the barn and then I'll do the distant hills there and then we'll start putting the foliage in as well and then the barn okay i just want to get a line for the bottom of the barn and the top of the front field area i'm just going to use a graphite pencil here okay now you can use any barn you like i'll leave that there actually and this barn is about here and 
And I'm using the photo as a reference. So the barn's finishing about there. And the side of it's about here somewhere. Then we've got the eave to the roof about here. Let's say about there. I'm, I'm not trying to get it exact, but I'm going to use a roughly the same shape that they've got. All right, we've got that. And then we'll come up on the skillion roof here, or from that corner there, up there like that, and down there like that. I might come back here a bit more, actually. It's a bit out of skew with. Now, if you don't have a barn, what I'll do is I'll create a traceable for this barn. I'll do a neat job of it. And um, you can incorporate that into this painting you do okay so I'm just roughing this in get over the edge okay I've pretty much sketched in the barn and the trees the main trees outlines that are within the picture and just the distant hill so now I'm going to work backwards to forwards but before we do that I want to get the barn in because everything is pretty much coming around the barn like it is in that reference picture and it's going to make sense to the picture as well when it's done now I've got the burnt umber the yellow oxide and the white and I've mixed it till I've got this shade here because it's pretty much the shade of the roof on the barn and keeping things simple the middle of this area will be light so I don't need to go around the over the tree because I want to keep that there so I want to block this in so we've blocked the roof in and we can probably even block this side in as well now the darker tone in the roof I want to get in there as well this is just where we're blocking into there so I'm going to grab some of the burn umber and just create a darker corner over here. Not too dark, just enough to subtly notice the difference like there is in the roof there. So mainly around here, I'm just sort of stamping it on. My paint's still wet and we're going to get this aspect of darkness within our painting. Get a bit more in there. It's not quite, my paint's very wet. There we go, I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna dry my brush, wipe it, and just blend that in. Okay, so we've got our roof done. I've just mixed up the yellow oxide and a bit of white because there's light hitting the roof. So I want to kind of emulate that and mainly all the way down this side here. So I'm just stamping it on with this brush and I've got myself my little flathead. I use it as a little, this one here. I'm just using that to sit that down as well into the paint just so it doesn't look like a hard stroke on my painting there. It's softening that in there. All right, now we'll do this side here. I'm grabbing just a good flathead brush. I want to pick up that burnt umber. You could use black, but I don't want to go black. I'm going to try this color. Now you've pretty much done that side of the roof. We want to come under that gable edge there. Sharp, stop it there. And then we want to come down this other gable edge there, the backside gable. Okay, boom. Then pick up your paint and then just, we'll block all this in for now. We need the dark colors to brighten up the, the lights, okay? So let's get all this mapped in. Okay, that's dry. I'm going to get that flathead brush again and get this lighter colour just to come down this side of the gable. So we're grabbing this. These flathead brushes are great for this sort of work. Okay. And I just want to highlight the top edge of that gable there. Very thinly, but enough to see it. 
Okay. I'll get a bit more on there. It's not quite enough. Now we're going to make this side a different tone because that's the way it is in the um, reference picture and it'll make sense to the light values in our painting as well, okay? This front side is pretty much the same colour as well. I've put some shadow under the top there as of this wall and we just want to leave them but get the wall colour in because we've got bushes there, don't forget. That's it. So I've got the mid-grey out of the tube and a little bit of the burnt umber just so I've got a different shade of grey, some darker values in there. Now chisel this brush up, make sure your paint's reasonably damp but not too watery because we want to use this as a chisel and get beautiful lines like this. Now what you've got to do here, you've got to leave a gap on here and a gap there. So what I'm going to do is come from here and just come straight down like that. Straight down. Straight down. Doesn't matter if you come into the field there. Pretty easy. Now the same on the other side, but we want a bit of a shadow there. And don't forget we've got a door here, so we're gonna... Just like that. Actually, I'll paint the shadow in later. I'm going to get the door on. The door's about here as well. So I'm just going to come from the bottom up now. And we've got our darker values within our old rustic looking barn. There we go. Don't kill too much of the darks. Now just picking up some of that raw umber again and virtually mapping out. We can roughly about here. I'm just going to map out where our door is somewhere around there okay How's that? that's looking all right and we can give this some sort of um, shadow as well sort of effect maybe just something like that And wherever else might be in the barn, there's some sort of, um, it's going to be quite dark. It's mixing with that white, that's why. I'll just get it on there. Just so we can come up. There we go, beautiful. Just like that, see? We've got some sort of a other door system happening there. I'm not copying those doors exact, but I'm getting those sort of features within there. Now going back to the black, we've done the grey, maybe I should have dried it, maybe I shouldn't. I want to get this shadow just a bit more scratching down. Just grabbing this darker colour now and lining the bottom of this gable dark just with a thin line just to give it the shadow. Okay, that doesn't need to be pulled down. Grabbing this lighter value of the roof here, making it a bit brighter, just to put some highlights. Very carefully down the side of the gable here, just so there's a bit of black there like that within the gable barge. Okay, just like that. We can probably come and, and then on the side of this door, we can do with some highlighting as well probably there and on some of these planks I've just gone with the darker color when I had it and put some horizontal or vertical lines there so we're just accentuating some highlights in here and I'm just softening up the roof a bit as well because the value didn't quite go the way I want it so I'm just sort of gingerly getting this highlight just so we've kept the dark shadow within the middle there. That's about all I want to do to this barn. Now we're going to get these trees in and you can see the green. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to map it in with the lighter colored greens and then I'll dab in the darker values 
getting them right, and then we can adjust that and then detail it. I'm just gonna use forest green, and I've got another pile here I've muted down with some white, and I pretty much got me um, tree there, so I'm gonna stamp all this around the way I want it. Slightly coming over the barn here a bit, not too much. Probably a branch in front of there as well, the way it is, it give it some sense of sinking back. I didn't even um, do my distant mountain, so I'll do that as well. I'll just use this colour, see what it looks like. Okay, well I've mapped that in. Now everywhere is dry, I've given it a reasonable dry. Now look at your reference and work out where the shadows are. Get some, I've got some black mixed with the raw umber and I'm sort of going on here now, working out where the shadows are because these shadows, getting them in the right spot really puts realism into your, your paintings, okay? So I'm gonna sort of, well I'm not going to sort of, I'm gonna actually paint some shadows. So I've got some there, where else can I see some? I've got some hovering over here from this stuff, down there a bit. It's subtle but it's needed and we've got some shadows within here. Now I've just picked up the green i'm stamping in now where i want the darker values look at your reference and get all this mapped in just so you got different shrubs and stuff happening in front of everything okay i'm looking at the reference and just getting an idea where a lot of the shadow is it it's doesn't have to be like, oh, I hope I'm getting the lines right and perfect. Just get them roughly within that area. Okay, now everything's blocked in. We want to get these black freckles within the painting here. And we'll just go over everything that we blocked in with our black dots slash freckles. So we're gonna detail those trees now. So I've got some burn umber, the green and the mid, cad yellow mid, you know, cad yellow light, and some of the burnt umber here. So I've mixed this up and I've put some of the raw umber into that to get the distant hills. And I've made the raw umber and the yellow for the dead wood color. So now I just want to get this one all the distant hill ones mapped in first. Okay, I've done that. Now I've just added some white with that color. I've just muted some of it down with white and I wanna, I well, don't wanna be too loud, but just sort of create some light hitting different surfaces of those distant hills I'll go back over that bit with dark. See how I'm tapping it here now? That's how light I want it. And I should have dried it first as well. Now grabbing the green that I mixed with, the forest green that I mixed with the yellow to get this tinge, I'm detailing over those darker values there. And then we'll add some more yellow to this mix just to detail the um, lighter areas. So I'll just show you. So I'm getting this done in all the darker areas. So this is going to emulate the darker foliage without it being just black, okay? Now I'm just going to pick up some of the that same colour but mixed with a lot more yellow just to show you the lighter areas how it's going to look 
So back up here. And this is just the color of my trees in this painting here. Okay. Okay. Now this darker area, I'm coming from the lighter area into the dark, but you want to leave some of it dark so it looks nice and deep under there. Now remember, all paintings, whether they're detailed or not, take your time. There's no massive big rush to get anything done because it's going to live on the wart forever and ever, amen. Way longer than you're going to live. Over this side, see what I'm doing is working this shape over that darker area. So I've got bands of branches flaring out into that darkness. Okay, I have, was using that colour there. Now I've gone to the one where I've added more yellow to it. And this is just going to finish those shrubs off. So we'll start over this side here and get some of this highlighted now nice and soft and we want to this is going over all the lighter green that we've blocked in but try and shape it in a way so you've got shadows within your bush want to show you with the shadows too now you've got your shadow in we're bringing the light we're imagining in our head this branch is coming down and hovering over the shadowed area okay some of it like what I've done here you're just dancing it into those blacks a little bit All right, I've wet me brush in the water a bit. <laughs> Just slapped it all over me table there. All right, <laughs> this is um, forest green. Now I'm gonna map in the fieldy area, just like something like that. We'll get it all oozed up there to wherever it's going. And something here as well. I've just scratched in a few trunks there while the camera was off, so that's nothing you missed out on. Now what we're gonna do is map this in, just underpaint it, and we're gonna get some light and dark values with this. All right, so pretty much like you're painting water on a seascape, but this isn't water on a seascape, this is the field on a landscape, all right? So we've got that like that. I don't know, should it be scratched up in front of that? Let's just see what it might look like. Oh no, 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 that looks like crap. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Now nothing's cleaned. I've just dolloped some uh, yellow into that. And I'll get a bit on the other side. See if anything I've concentrated it in the middle of my brush because I want to just look at it like we've got lawn, the lawn's there, and I don't know, we just want some sort of, just pretend you're doing an ocean, but like I said, this ain't the ocean, it's just lawn. How does that look like? That's not too bad. I want it a bit brighter, maybe. Just something to, yep, yeah, put it on there, laden it on, and then just mow the lawn, boom. I've got it in a bit of a smiley face position, that way it just looks like, we got lane. Just mix some black with the green, just a little bit, because I probably want this area 
looks dark, so I'll get it in there. It's very scary when you do this to your paintings, isn't it? And get a bit of a, how's that looking? Yeah, we've just got some sort of shadows there. Because while I'm really doing it, I just didn't get to the bottom corner there, and it's knocked me off that it didn't, so. And that paint's still wet, so it allowed it to look like luscious lawn. Now we just got to put a shadow under here to give it that bullshit effect, okay? All right, I've given it a bit of a dry. Just got some black and green mixed again, forest green. And I want to easy stamp on some dark here. And if you think it's not dry enough, dry the bloody thing. I'll make sure some comes off me brush. See, nothing's coming. Get along there. You know, you just hate that. You're watching a tutorial and some of them are painting and nothing's coming off your bloody brush. Get off there, that's it. Get the damn on the pan canvas, that's it. Get it right on. So what I'm trying to achieve here is actually get some paint onto here. Maybe a bit of a shadow dancing out here. All the way out there. And we're just getting this shadows within our bushes. And then we're going to lusciously let them sit over our shadow. Okay, I've dried it and I'm just gonna get some little shrubs out here in the distance. Where's my horizon line? Somewhere there. Just to give something in front of those distant hills, okay? And then I'll just mute some of this color that I've got with white. Create the shapes of those with with the white or the lighter muted color. Okay, I picked up the, the forest green, dabbed them down a little bit and I've got the other color that I highlighted just to sort of bring some of this dribbling in front of everything there. Let me have a look how that's looking on the monitor and some in front of that. Just so the bottom line of all these bushes is not one straight cut off line. Now just to finish this painting off, those bits we just dribbled over our shadow, we're gonna use the one mixed with the yellow. We just got that color that we had and I've just mixed it with the yellow to create the minutest but effective highlights that lighten up the dark colours there. Easy does it. I tell you what, I'm dying to whack that kettle on. I'm got to get in the house and whack that kettle on. I need a cuppa. I'm the guy that likes a biggie with me cuppa, if you don't know. That's it. We can sign this little baby. And we'll give it a name as well. I'll just put a nice little signature down here and we'll put a frame on it. And don't forget all my paintings are for sale. Check out the link in the description below to take you to my art for sale on my Facebook page. So we'll just put a frame on there like that. Oh, there you go. That's not too shabby, hey? We've got a decent barn. We've got a decent sky. We've got some conifer ferns, pines in there, and a beautiful lawn that's been mowed. It looks nothing like the reference, but we use the reference to get subjects in our painting. So like I said, have a look in the links in the description below. Check out what's appropriate for you. Uh, there's a couple down there. If you like what I've done today, you tell your friends, but if you don't, tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya!